now let's uh, look at this uh, concept of monte carlo methods uh, which uh, primarily plays a very important role when we talk about simulations right uh, there are uh, see lot of applications uh, in uh, uh, in uh, risk management kind of a space where we may have to simulate the data based on certain parameters it's like a reverse generation of the data right probably from the data finding out the parameters like average standard deviation is one aspect probably the reversal from the standard deviation and the mean generating the original data is what is the process that is involved with your simulation kind of a process now how do you generate it there are various methods there is a historical simulation there is a monte carlo simulation there are different methods in which you can generate the data or you can do the calculation uh, so monte carlo is uh, one aspect where we talk about uh, in terms of understanding the underlying distribution or the shape of the data and based on the shape trying to generate the values right so when we when we uh, look at this monte carlo especially in case of uh, in case of uh, risk management or in case of finance we use it in areas like portfolio management we use it very heavily in calculation of value at risk which is one of the base for risk management we also use it for option pricing strategies option determining the option price there are so many methods to find out the option price but one such method is again using the simulation itself but okay from an exam standpoint we are slightly relieved here for the reason these are primarily done through systems so from a pen and paper perspective it's much difficult to perform these kind of simulation so whatever that could be asked from an exam standpoint is the concept that drives this uh, process of simulation rather than the actual uh, values itself actual calculations itself now how do we look at this see the first thing is let's say my intention is to predict the price for the next 10 days for whatever reason probably i want to find out if i am investing 1000 today what is the what is the chance that i can lose more than 50 rupees after 10 days right for various reasons today in this particular stock let's say dr reddy's i want to invest 1000 rupees or 10000 bucks now i want to know what is the probability that after 10 days my loss would be more than some hundred bucks from that standpoint or let's say i have some options derivatives expiring on dr reddy's after 10 days in 10 days there are options that are expiring so if i want to purchase that option today how much premium i should pay for it these kind of uh, scenarios can come out much better if i can do the prediction of the stock prices for the next 10 days right if i have to if i have to if i can do the prediction of the stock price for the next 10 days now on what basis i can do a prediction of the stock price for that i am simulating a price path what could be the price for the next 10 days based on some of the patterns in the last couple of days or last uh, last uh, few months or something based on the patterns in the last few months i would be generating a price path for the next 10 days now we cannot uh, give one single path because uh, we cannot uh, give an accuracy to the prediction so we will come out with multiple paths and this multiple paths 
when they are generated using a particular kind of a concept and a distribution, there is a name that is associated for each of them. So, the one such kind of a distribution that I can associate is what I call as a geometric Brownian motion. It's a very important uh, aspect in terms of the stock price or any price prediction kind of a model. We assume that the prices will follow what is called as the geometric Brownian motion. And the interesting aspect of geometric Brownian motion is something like this. The change in price, DST is nothing but D, generally the word small d is used for a change. The, this is the calculus usage of this. So, what it says is the change in the stock price, DST, a small change in the stock price, it can be modeled using two components. There is an average change. Right, there is a trend, there is a trend part which is nothing but the average and there is some fluctuation part. Now, probably just to showcase that scenario for you, let us say if I have been observing the last one month prices, one year prices of Dr. Reddy's, right. If I just do a simple plot of these with the dates, if I am doing a simple uh, plot, what we are saying, this is a kind of a plot that is coming up. On this graph, on this graph, let us say if I am uh, trying to draw one line, a trend line kind of stuff, if I am simply trying to draw, now you see, there is some uppish movement that is being seen through this line. What it is saying, the price for each of the periods, when I have to predict the price for the next few periods, there is some constant growth part that is there, which is like a trend and some random part around that trend. Right? This line, if we see here, this line is a kind of a continuously growing kind of a path and the, the blue ones which are slightly above in some cases, slightly below in some cases, they are signifying the random path, right. So, if I have to model a change from today to tomorrow, what this uh, GBM tells me is the change is because of two parts. Because there is, from today to tomorrow, the straight line also goes slightly up. So, there is a, a constant drift. The word uh, associated with that uh, constant growth is it called as drift. There is a constant drift along with a random part. So, if I have to predict the tomorrow's price, we are talking about these two aspects. The constant drift that is coming up and uh, 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 a random component around that stock price is what is coming out. Now, that is what this model is telling. There is uh, an average. Mu t is nothing but the average. Average of the stock price. There is some growth. There is some change around that average line. Along with some component which is random which is revolving around that the price based on the variance that is associated with it. If the variance is high, if the fluctuation in the stock price is high, even the random part could be higher. If the variance is lower, even the random part could be lower. So, that kind, if at all you see any, any entity that is following such kind of a pattern, completely growing up or going down or even flatter, more not in terms of flatter, but generally for slightly going up or slightly going down kind of scenarios in the long run. But within that, 
some kind of patterns are there some kind of randomness is there for all those kind of entities we can think of using a geometric brownian motion for the modeling of them so that's where he says you can use them generally for stock prices and exchange rates because both of them you see some kind of a long term pattern in those kind of scenarios but when we look at interest rates we see a kind of mean reverting nature in them today if the interest rates are up tomorrow they have to come down right and once they have come down probably they may go even more down so they actually fluctuate around a particular value but they will not uh, keep going up and up and up forever whereas the exchange rates or probably the stock prices or these kind of stuff if you assume that they keep going in one direction they show some kind of a trend always in those cases you can use the geometric brownian motion to model them because geometric brownian motion takes these two components for describing a change there is a constant change which keeps going up or down there is a constant part which is what is associated with uh, with time right as for the next 5 days there is some constant growth so constant part which is more dependent on time and there is a random part which is more dependent on the variance and in the calculus world tz z is a normal random variable dz is treated as a random variable wherever you use the word dz in a calculus uh, standpoint or probably not calculus it's called stochastic calculus in a stochastic uh, calculus scenario wherever we see dt it means change with respect to time when we see dz it's a random part right so in this if you can see there is a stable part there is a constant part with respect to time which is based on the average and there is a random part with respect to the standard deviation or the variance where there is a dz that is associated this equation is what is associated with a geometric brownian motion now using this geometric brownian motion if at all i have to do the prediction i can go with this kind of an equation if i have to predict the stock price actually this comes from the differential equation solving that differential equation i get this kind of a scenario which one this one this is the random part dz is there right dz is there random part and based on the standard deviation that is associated sigma is the standard deviation so the the increase any change we are saying two parts one is a constant drift coming by the mean average and one is a movement around the average given by the standard deviation and the random part because we are saying it may go up or it may go down it's random it may either go up or go down it is random so i am modeling it to that dz now solving this equation solving this differential equation what comes out to me is if at all i want to find out the change for tomorrow i will take the stock price of today multiply it with uh, mu times the delta v mu is the mean i take the mean multiply it uh, with uh, delta t delta t is per day for how many days let's say i want it for 10 days i multiply it as 10 multiply it with 10 and similarly i generate a random variable that epsilon is nothing but the random variable so i'll take the standard deviation i take the epsilon which is a random variable i multiply it with root delta t and that's how i generate the price per tomorrow now i'll just showcase uh, in this excel example in the spreadsheet what i will do is let's say i want to generate the price for dr reddy's for the next 10 days right i want to generate the prices of dr reddy's for the next 10 days 
what I can simply do? First thing I will find out a few parameters. I will find out the returns first of all. I will take the returns. Here I will take continuously compounded kind of returns. So how do I get the continuously compounded kind of returns? I will take the logarithm. Log S1 by S0. Log today's price by yesterday's price. So I will take log this by this. So this is a continuously compounded daily return. On a day base, so probably you could very well do this minus this divided by this. Right? Today's price minus yesterday's price by yesterday's price. But that gives me a discrete return. But, but if I take it as a continuous return, I, the same thing get translated as logarithm of S1 by S0. So, if I am saying this is the return, so for all the days, these are the daily returns. Now, based on this, I can find out what is the average return. Right, so I will say the mean return, mean daily return. The mean daily return on this data is something this much. That's the average daily return for me. And the standard deviation also I require in the modeling process. So I will take the standard deviation of the daily returns. The standard deviation of the daily returns for me is around this much. Now, one thing we observe in this very small data, you will always find mean very less compared to the standard deviation. Of course, this concept we will use in our next uh, chapter when we talk about volatility estimation. But just giving you a, no, a general observation, in most of these cases, especially when we deal with very small time periods, here the time period is one day, daily data. Whenever we deal with very small time periods, we generally observe that the mean is much smaller compared to its standard deviation altogether. Alright, keeping that aside for time being. So, I have the mean and the standard deviation. Now, what is the today's latest price? The latest price is 2238. Now, if I have to model for tomorrow, the next price. What is that it is saying? The components are the today's price into mu. Mu is already computed, the mean return. Number of days, because I want only for next day, one day. Because I want to do for the next 10 days like that. So, daily price. So, I will take delta T as 1. For one day I require. Because mu is also daily. You have to match. Mu is a daily return in our example. So, even T should be in terms of number of days. So, anyhow I want daily return only. Tomorrow's price only I want. So, I can take delta T as 1. The same way, sigma I already have, standard deviation. Root delta T is also 1 because T is 1 only. For tomorrow only I am going to do the prediction. Now, this epsilon is a random number. Between 0 to 1. Epsilon is a random number between 0 to 1. Now, what I will do, I will simply generate some random number between 0 to 1, right? I will generate a random number. It is a completely random. So, there is, a, uh, I mean, uh, this, this random numbers are something that are very heavily used in, uh, in the in the simulation process, you generate in random. Each value has equal chance of occurring. And that too it comes on a very random basis. So like that, let's say, I have generated some thousand such random numbers.